Hello there, THP 494 and 598, Matthew here. All right, so we just talked about Windows for one hot second, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start to dig in to what it really means for how we can set up something for a live performance. How we can start to build our application so that it works in perform mode uh, and means that we don't have to actually enter the networking environment, right? So this is like pushing us beyond the place where we have been working, which is all here in the network, all here in the networking environment, in the nitty gritty building programming. All right, how do we start to think about um, building things where we're not actually touching the inside of our network, but we're only working with the interfaces that we've built? Okay, so with that in mind, before we get uh, building and doing all the exciting fun stuff, right, let's first consider the kind of setup that we might want to have. So we might think of a really simple setup that we would work with as being something like this, right? We have a really simple kind of configuration where I've got a laptop or I've got a computer of some kind. kind. I've got it attached to another display, or in this case, a projector. And for the sake of simplicity, I can imagine that uh, these both have the same resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's great. That's going to save me a whole bunch of brain space. Which means if I think about those two windows sitting side by side, right? So if I think about their entire run, their entire length and height all combined together, that means that they're going to be 3840 wide by 1080 tall. Right, and we can, you know, really dial into the fact that these is this is really two windows that are are two displays that are 1920 by 1080. Excellent. So, how do I set some set up something for this? Right. So, I can imagine in this setup, on one display, I'm going to want to have my interface. Right. I want to have something that I'm manipulating over here, and on my other display, I want to have my output. That's going to be the display that's actually getting pumped out to the projector, that's getting pumped out to the LED wall, that's getting uh, routed some other place, right? You get the idea. Okay, well, how do I work with that? How do I get started? So for the sake of sanity, right, for the sake of our sanity, uh, I know some of you don't have commercial or educational licenses, and that's totally okay, right? We're doing a bunch of learning, and so it's important for us to kind of pull apart these concepts in that place first. Uh, and so for that, right, um, kind of considering that, we need to recognize that we have a few limitations in terms of how large we can render some things. So to kind of keep all that in perspective, I'm going to use some numbers that make sure that uh, we think about our displays uh, in terms of uh, how we can actually work with them for the non-commercial license. So feel free, right, if you've got a commercial license or you have an educational license, right, you can use uh, per the proper numbers we just talked about. But for right now, I'm going to use a whole set of numbers that are scaled down, right? So they're, we're going to keep the same aspect ratio, but we're just going to use smaller numbers that don't override or kind of hit our limit in terms of uh, thinking about resolution for the non-commercial license. Cool. All right. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and grab a container. Now we're going to set up this container so that its dimensions, again, and I'm going to revisit this one more time. We'll open up this giant picture. And we'll scooch it down. So I want to have uh, a container, right? Because I'm going to uh, associate this with my perform window. I want a container that's going to be uh, twice, like two displays wide and one display tall. In the case of um, Full HD, that's going to be 3840 by 1080. We're going to dial that down, right? We're going to kind of back that off a little bit, but maintain our aspect ratio. We're going to go ahead and make a new container here. And because we want to maintain our aspect ratio, we're going to go ahead and dial in our size here at 1280 by 360. Now I pick 1280 because 1280 by 1280 is a maximum resolution that we can draw with the non-commercial license. And so uh, this is going to make sure that we maintain an aspect ratio that is going to be uh, equivalent to two 16 by 9 um, windows that are side by side. Cool? So roll with me a little bit. I know it's going to be a little bit confusing, but if you've got a non, if you've got a commercial license or an educational license, you're welcome to use uh, the bigger resolutions. 
Okay, so what's going on in here? Now, I like to use hierarchy when I'm uh, building and working in here. And so what we're going to do is with our container here to get started, well, let's call this uh, final out, right? Or we could maybe we could call it uh, control and disp. I think we can put a plus in here. Nope, we can't. Let's do control underscore disp. Great. So we're going to dive inside one more time. We're going to add another container. I know it seems crazy. And we're going to set this container to be uh, its parent's dimensions. So me.parent par width and height. Excellent. So, so far it seems like I've done a very redundant thing here and, you know, roll with me for one second. We'll call this final. We're going to make a copy paste action happen here. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to think of this as interface. And the width here, I'm going to go ahead and divide this number by two. Right? Great. So there's my interface. Let's copy paste. We can call this out or output. Excellent. And so now I've got these two puppies side by side. All right. So it looks like I might be up to something interesting. So we've got to keep on keeping on here for this to make some sense. So when I'm prototyping interfaces, I like to give them big, bold uh, background colors because that helps to kind of visually break up the space a little bit. And I like using hierarchy to uh, do some of this building because Rather than the kind of rigmarole of placing things in literal x, y positions, uh, which can often shift depending on the size of your display, right? Um, you can have all, all sorts of kinds of problems uh, if you're ever moving from laptops to proper desktops and your resolutions changing and all those things. I like to just go ahead and uh, build these so that they're a little more modular in their nature and that they behave in the way that I can kind of expect. Okay. Enough of me kind of yammering on about that. Let's go ahead and give these two some background colors. So we're going to give them uh, a background color, and I'm going to give this maybe like a nice juicy pink color here. Ooh, maybe like a little bit darker so it doesn't like burn our eyes. Excellent. And we're going to crank up the alpha on that. So I've got a little bit of purpley action happening over here. Let's give this puppy a color. Uh, we can give it a color like uh, maybe like a dark green. And we'll pump up its alpha. And now we're going to use hierarchy to attach these two. And this still looks a bit trash, so what's going on? Um, this doesn't seem to have done anything, Matt. So we're going to go to our final. Let's go ahead and set our line to be left to right. Excellent. And now I can see that using hierarchy, right, I've gone ahead and uh, parented, or um, yeah, parented these two puppies um, to my final. This also means when I back out of here that, that this one container, right, that has these two children, that's what's being treated as the kind of container that I'm uh, manipulating here. And that's going to be really useful for me in just all sorts of ways. So let's go ahead and move in here. Uh, and in output, let's, because we know we've done this like so many times, right? So dot slash BG, we're going to add something inside of here called background or BG. Let's move inside of output. Let's add a movie file in. We can attach it to a null. We can name our null BG. BG BG. And we can see, bada bing, bada boom, lovely. The banana has showed up right there, just the way that we want it. Great. Okay, let's now take a look here inside of interface. Now, inside of interface, we can start to think about how we might uh, build all sorts of different things in here. So I'm going to carry on with my container kind of model, right? My container paradigm for thinking about how I'm working with that. I'm going to make two containers. Let's go ahead and give one of these a color uh, that's like a little bit brighter. Like I might give this one like a gray color so I can see it. And we'll give this one uh, maybe like orange. Why not? Life is short. You might as well pick a color. Great. Now, it's going to be a little bit frustrating for me to constantly do this back and forth. I don't really like doing that. I could, I suppose, right? I could use this to display uh, this interface. But I still now I'm kind of like, I've got this other window here. And it might feel a little bit cluttered. 
one of the things I like to do is I like to split my uh, display, right? I split my network left, right? And then I can then actually assign um, my secondary pane over here to go ahead and be da -da -da -da, the panel. So now I can see my panel over here as I'm working. Okay, so first off, I can see that I need to change one other thing out here in my parent. I need to actually align these left to right. And lo and behold, this orange one, it rolls off the side, right, is too big. So let's go ahead and adjust this. So I'm going to leave this container to be 400 by 300, but I'm going to change the size of this other container to actually be 240 by 300. Right, so I haven't seen anything change over here, but we could see if I turn this down to 200 maybe, right? That would be smaller. So at 240, I actually just go <clears throat> all the way to the edge, which is just what I want to do. Now, I like to start to think of these, con um, these containers inside as different places where I can hold different elements of my display. So I'm going to go ahead and call this buttons. My, my gray one, I'm going to give it the name buttons, and uh, we're going to use just a fast replicator to build a whole big chunk of buttons in here. Why not? So first, let's go ahead, go ahead and grab a replicator. We're going to use that for sure. We're going to need a button. We also need a table. Wonderful. Now I happen to know that I need some exact dimensions. Uh, I want one column. I've already done all the math here, so I know exactly what it is that I want. We're going to give it 48 rows. In my button, right, we've learned in the past that what we want to do is we want to turn off the display for this button, which is going to be our master operator. But I want to turn on, in the for loop, the display as a callback. I'm going to go ahead and associate my button as my master operator, my table as my template table. And lo and behold, it looks like I only have one button. Don't fret. Don't forget that we need to go ahead and set our line here to be left to right. And we're going to give us a, a maximum of eight per line. Now, what gives? It looks like we're missing one. Well, if we take a look inside of here, we are in fact missing one. And that is because here in our replicator, we've left this ignore first row toggle on. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And now we've got 48 wonderful buttons that are thrilling and exciting in every way. They are everything that we hoped, or who knows, maybe we didn't hope that we might have. So I've got a ton of buttons over here, uh, and I've also got this other space. So while we're here, let's go ahead, uh, and we might imagine that in a VJ setup or in some kind of interface for a live show, we might want to actually have a confidence monitor, or we might want to have something else that takes up this space. So we could do that one of two ways, right? We could go ahead and we could move inside of this container. We could place this inside. So this is one way that we can solve this problem. Let's go ahead and add a container in here. And let's set its size again to be me parent par width. And we'll give its height as me parent par height. We'll divide this by two. Okay, now we can't see this thing again, right? Because it's got no opacity. If we start to turn that up, we can see, aha, there it lives there in the bottom. Another th way that we can manipulate how we th see our containers is actually to use our borders. So if we turn our borders on, left, right, bottom, top, we can see that we've got this lovely little outline that's drawn around it. We can move out here and let's go ahead and align these top to bottom. Great, and so now we've got this on the top. If we back out here, we can see that lo and behold, we've got an interface on the left, we've got our output on the right. We can close this window here. Uh, and we're kind of getting close now, right? We're getting, uh, we're starting to like approach and dial in to the kind of thing that we might want. And if I view this, I can see that sure shooting, right? I've got a uh, an interface on the left, I've got my uh, output on the right, and we can imagine that this might uh, actually properly scale across two different displays. Now I still have a problem though, which is when I enter perform mode, this looks all kerflunk today. Right, this is like, ah, what's wrong? This is like 
trash. Well, we missed one step. And our last step here, right, is we've got to back out. And then we then need to associate this particular component, right, this comp, with our window. And we can do that by dragging and dropping them right together, right? That is the operator that I would like to use in display mode. If I enter display mode, or enter perform mode, excuse me, then there it is. That's great. Now, uh, we could change one other thing here, right? So this is going to break our ability to actually see what's going on. We'll only see one of these. But if I go down to monitor, I can leave it actually at monitor one. If I change this from single monitor to all monitors, right? So the location for this is both of the monitors that are displayed. And if I change the size from automatic to fill location, we'll see that when I enter perform mode, we should, with any luck, only see the banana. And we do. Now, we've also still got these borders drawn on top here, which is like, you know, futz in our style a little bit. So let's go ahead and turn those off. Now we can enter perform mode. And sure enough, there's just the banana here on our screen. And what you can't see is that over on my other display is where all of my interface elements live. So that's jamming. That's great. That's getting us much closer to what it is that we want. Okay, uh, let's, well, yeah, we could leave that for right now. Okay, so with that in mind, right, we've kind of uh, approached what it is to build a really simple uh, kind of setup. And if we return here one more time to thinking about what that means, right, yoink, in this particular setup, we've got two uh, different uh, elements, right, that are drawn across two displays. So we can imagine that, right, over here on the left, this is my interface area. This is the banana. And that corresponds here up to my uh, it's like very simple kind of rudimentary system diagram as being the interface living here on the computer and the output living here on the projector. Okay, that is all well and good. But I can hear you telling me already, that's lovely, Matt, but I have a problem. And my problem is uh, I need a much more complicated setup than one monitor is going to allow me. And I am terrified, because I would be terrified, because I have been terrified, about what happens and how I wrestle with the problem of needing to have all sorts of different kinds of elements available to me uh, and still taking advantage of the space and not uh, introducing any kind of performance lag or any performance hiccups into my, uh, my system. So how do we start to think about that? So with that in mind, that's actually the next thing we're going to tackle. Uh, and so I will see you here in just a moment and we will dive right in to solving that problem.